I see you. I know what you're doing. Look at online for prefabricated homes because you saw that the housing prices are to the point where you can't afford them. It can be very alluring when you're looking at some of these prefabricated homes, but not all prefabricated homes are created the same. Today we're going to be going over the differences between prefabricated homes and prefabricated modular homes. Even though the words are interchangeable and we'll get into the definitions in just a minute, it can be super confusing. So let me show you some of the red flags so that way you don't make these mistakes so you don't lose a lot of this because it can cause you a big headache. So let's start off with some definitions that totally make things completely unclear for the average person trying to find a prefabricated house that's also considered modular. Prefabricated homes are specialist dwelling types of prefabricated building which manufacturers offsite in advance usually use standards of sections shipped and easily assembled. Some current prefab home designs include architecture architectural details inspired by postmodern and futuristic architecture. The modular building is prefabricated building that consists of repeated sections called modules. Modularity involves construction of sections away from the building site, then delivering them into the intended site. Installation of prefabricated sections is complete on site. Modules can be placed side by side, end to end, stacked, allowing for a variety of configurations and styles. So those definitions weren't confusing in the least bit. Give me a break. But why are they so important? Well, when you're going through some of these websites, you're gonna see that they'll have the words prefabricated but they may not necessarily have the word modular. And in that case, most likely, it's not gonna qualify for traditional home loans like your FHA, your VA, your RD, and even some conventionals, because they're not built to the specifications that are required for those specific types of loans. But if you're looking on a website and you happen to see that it's a prefab modular home, in most cases, it's going to qualify for those that have the 30-year mortgage, which is a good thing, especially if you're financing. Now, if you did want to get a loan on your prefabricated house and it didn't qualify for FHA, VA, or any kind of conventional loan, you can ask for a personal loan, which you're going to end up having to spend a lot more in an in interest rate because, you know, personal loans are always a little bit more in money. Just keep that in mind if you're building a prefabricated home that isn't built to modular specifications that you may have to have a personal loan because of the fact it didn't qualify. Now, I know that for many of you, you're thinking, well, I'm going to go ahead and buy it cash. If you do plan on buying a prefab home that isn't to modular specifications, and at this point you feel like there's nothing you need to worry about, you're still going to have to go through zoning, permitting, and your HOAs. Many HOAs will allow for you to do a prefabricated modular home, but they may not allow you to do a prefab home that isn't built to modular specifications. So I know what you're thinking. You're like, well, it doesn't matter because it's a super cool looking house and I ended up getting it for a really cheap. It's getting delivered and I'm gonna put it on my piece of property. Well, here's a couple things. If it has not been approved by your local permitting office, you could have a problem. Not only is it just the permits, you're gonna to have to have the proper foundation poured and you're gonna to have to have all those specifications before you even have it delivered to your house. Another thing is if you think you're gonna get away with this because you live in some rural area and they're never gonna find out, well, guess what? They are going to find out because a lot of tax assessors offices are now using drones to map out all of the little subsections of each place that's being taxed. So if you think that you're going to hide your little cabin in the woods without them finding out, they're going to find out. They always find out. So don't try to be sneaky. So now let's talk about some of the red flags that you should be looking for when you're looking on the internet for a prefabricated modular home. First things first, you are going to have to look in the description and see if it specifies that it is built to modular specifications. Secondly of all, I want you to go through the website and see if there's actual homes that have been built, not computer generated drawings. I've noticed that a lot of websites are just ideas that people have. And what they're doing is they're crowdfunding to get their idea off the ground. You know, you just don't want to invest into a speculative type of prefab home, even though it's pretty exciting and you want to get on the ground floor on a lot of these, you may end up getting in over your head and never get the product that you were promised in the first place. 
The other thing that you can do when you're looking at some of these prefabricated companies is look on the Better Business Bureau. Many of them will be on there. And if they're not, that's another red flag. And then you're gonna wanna check for their social media presence. Anybody that has a very cool modular prefabricated home will have some kind of social media presence somewhere, whether it's on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, they'll have something to show off their product. Because any company that has a really cool concept is going to be in those locations so they can show it off and sell more of their product. Make sure they have videos, make sure they have pictures, make sure they have people that have purchased one ahead of time. That's another thing. If you can find people that have tagged that company where they actually have shown their structure being delivered to their house, maybe you can find those people online with that specific tag of the company and you could talk to them and see how they have enjoyed the product they have received and see if it's something that you wanna invest in and have for your next prefabricated home. If they have none of those things, that is another job giant red flag. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't invest in those unless you know it's a real product. Hot off the presses. I'm literally in my pajamas because I'm editing this video, but I have to put this in here. One of the prefab constructions that people have been talking about for a few years now is 3D printed homes. In California, they have just come out with a 3D printed home neighborhood. Super cool idea. Of course, I'm scrolling through the article really fast just to see how much of these homes are going to be because they've always prefaced this as it's going to be an affordable housing option. Look at the freaking price. That's not affordable for the average American. It might be affordable for the average Californian, but I bet to venture it's not. <laughs> That's not affordable. That's, that's not affordable. Sorry, buddy. Sorry. <laughs> All right. So here's another thing that a lot of people don't think about. So they're like, I'm buying it cash. I don't even have to worry about permitting because it's my uncle's land, even though I, I, they're going to get caught by the tax assessor. We'll just forget that part. But the other thing they're not considering is the fact that insurance companies may not insure it as a dwelling that people live in. A lot of prefabricated homes are designed for, let's just say, recreational living. They're not meant for long-term use. That's even true of a lot of tiny homes. That's why they're made to RV specifications. So when you're going to get homeowner's insurance, make sure they'll cover your prefabricated house. Now, if it's a prefab modular home, they're going to cover it. As long as it's over a certain square footage, they will cover it because it's built to modular specifications. That's why another reason why it's so important to find out ahead of time before you sign on the dotted line or hand over any kind of deposit check for a prefabricated modular home. Now here's another thing that gets people in a lot of hot water is when they see the price tag, they look at the price and it's like $55,000 and they don't consider all the other factors that go into it. I know to a lot of people that seems like a no brainer, but they are thinking that the house itself costs $55,000, but they're not putting in the fact that you have to get a foundation. You're going to have to have permits. You're gonna to have to make sure there's utilities out to the property, including electricity and water. And if you can't get water out of there, can you have a well out there? What kind of septic system are you gonna need? All those things need to be considered when you're doing your roundabout price for this particular piece of property. Now, if you're getting a home loan, a lot of times all of these things are included in your new construction loan. You can speak to your lender on how you can buy a prefabricated modular home and use a new construction loan to have that done. All right, now you've gone through all the Google webs and you have found a website that makes prefabricated manufactured homes. Well, that is a totally different ball of wax. And in order to know the difference between modular and manufactured homes, you're gonna wanna watch this video right here. My name is Christina Smallhorn, your real estate whisperer. And I tell you all this because good real estate information matters.